welcome back to my channel. My name is Katherine, and today we're gonna look at automating things that I don't wanna do. A while back, I got this digital picture frame, and it goes through your photos, but the problem is that it would only accept JPEG and ping images. An iPhone saves a lot of your images as this HEIC format, which is not really supported anywhere. It's only supported for Apple products. So I could have changed each image individually using something called Preview. This is a tool, again, on an Apple machine, and you can export it as the correct image format. Now, this is really annoying to do manually. I only have a subset here, but there were like a thousand photos I wanted to convert. Now, something I know that really helps you automate things is the terminal. This is the text-based interface to your computer. One of these automation options might have been uploading all my photos to some platform and then having them convert it and then I download all of these new things. But I didn't really wanna do all of that through some kind of platform that's probably gonna charge you money in order to do that automation. With the terminal, it's there's no sign up, there's no account creation, I can just use the tool. So there's this one tool that we can use that will convert the photos for us. And the way we use the tool is we have to download it first. And so this homebrew thing, it's a package manager for Mac. The terminal is something you can easily open by going terminal and hitting enter. So here's one example of a terminal. Here we can do things like PWD, which will show me my current working directory, and a bunch of other commands that can help you automate stuff or give you information about your machine or the applications on your machine. So if you don't have Homebrew installed, the first thing you would do is copy this. We already have Homebrew installed, and so that's why we got that command there. And then we're gonna install the tool. So we do brew install with the tool name, and this will download the tool for us that we can use to convert our photos automatically. We don't have to create an account, and I actually already have it installed, and so that's why we see this message here. We could reinstall it, but I don't wanna do that. Then step three, run the command. And so this is a command, you can think of it as a button click or a way to interact with this tool of I wanna convert this image, which is my HEIC, to my JPEG file. So let's do something like this. And so it's the original file name and then the new file name. So we'll just copy this first step. Uh, to make sure you have it installed, you can just write magic. And if it's something like this, this means it knows the tool exists and you're just not using the tool correctly. So let's clear this up and let's try to convert an image. Now these images live in the images folder over here, and if we look at that print working directory, we're clearly not in that folder. So we need to go into our desktop, which does have our images. We'll go into our images, and these are the images we have. And so let's try to convert one with the magic tool using the command convert, and we want to convert 0208. I'll just do the tab here to complete there. And then image, we'll call it the same thing, but it's gonna be a JPEG. And so this is gonna convert the image for us. And over here, we see it appear, and it's a new image. We've converted the image, it took two seconds. I didn't have to open preview. It's great. If we go LS here, we can see that new image. And since we have the new image now, I can go in and I can delete this other image. If I can spell it right. So now if we LS again, the HEIC image is gone, we just have this image. So it automated it for one photo. In automation here, it made that process faster. It didn't fully automate it in that it changed all of my photos, but it automated the process of changing one photo. Now if we can change one photo, we should be able to change multiple photos. So if we go back to that blog post, we can do this magic mo grief thing, and we can just convert everything to the JPEG format. And so we have JPEG, and I wanna convert all of the photos that have this ending with them. So we're in that HEIC format. So we're just gonna copy this. We are in the images directory here, the images folder, and it's gonna convert everything for me. And that's great. It automated all this conversion. I didn't have to open it up, resave it, any of that nonsense. And if we run LS, it, did that, it converted all the photos. Now, if I wanna remove the HEIC photos, I can just do remove star HEIC, 
And so it'll delete all the photos with that format or with that file extension. And if we run LS again, I have just my JPEG images. The one concern here is you're giving this tool access to your photos. Are you okay with that security? Well, I hope so because it saved you time in converting them. So that's one task you can automate as a software engineer, but there are so many other tasks that can be automated. One thing you should definitely take advantage of are aliases and bash functions. These usually live in something called a bash profile. And at the bottom here, we have one that automatically sets the JDK version for whatever version of Java we want to run. So if we want to run Java 15, we can just do JDK and it'll switch it to that. If we wanted to do the JDK 9 or Java 9, we can just put it in there. And these commands are automated for us. And you might be thinking it's only two commands, like why, and really it's one command and then another command that actually displays your new version. Why automate this or create some tool so you can just do JDK 15 or JDK 7? Well, this command is like hard to remember. So automating things that are tedious, time consuming, that's one reason you might automate something, but something that's just annoying to remember, that's another reason. If you're working with different Java applications that are using Using different versions of the JDK, you might have to switch between a lot. So something like this might be helpful. Now that's one bash function I find particularly useful, but depending on what you're developing, there could be so many others. If we go to the internet, if these happen to be tasks you use often, it might be useful to add them to your bash profile. So if you are constantly compressing files, add something like this. This one isn't super useful counting the number of files in a directory. And the reason it's not useful is you can easily already do that by going to get info and it will tell you how many items are in the directory. This one might be more useful, the idea of searching through your command history, but I tend to just use the up arrow or the down arrow to go through my command history. This one might be a little more useful of creating an alias to easily go to a specific folder, but these can break easily if you ever reorganize the way your files are run. So that's another thing. Are the things you're developing, these automation tools, maintainable? If you reorganize where your files live, will it break this automated thing that does this great step for you? If that's the case, maybe the maintenance is not worth the automation and it's not worth automating. However, if you ever do want to add an alias, you can just write nano.bashprofile, add in your alias, and then do control O, enter, to write out or to save your bash profile. And then you can put it into place or put it into action by going source bash profile. Now you can use the commands or the aliases. Another thing you can do to try to automate your processes is using this tool in Postman. So if you're like me, a backend engineer, and you're constantly calling and testing APIs, a lot of those APIs are going to need authorization. So you have to get a token first in some way, shape, or form, and then you make the request to the actual API. When you make that request to get the authorization, in this tests area, you can automate the setting of an environment variable. So you might do something like this where you take the response body and then parse out the token, saving it in an environment variable. And so that you just run this, it would set up this environment variable called token with a valid token. Then in another request, say this is about movies, for the authorization, maybe it's a bearer token and you can just put in the token. So you'd run this get auth request, it would set up your environment variable for your authorization, and then you could run this request setting up that authorization so that you can easily get the data you're looking for. It's a simple hit send here, and then hit send here versus having to track down some authentication token that's valid. Another thing this automates is that you don't have to go into the response body, copy something, and then in your actual request, replace that token. That's all automated here in that you just click a button 
and then it sets up your authorization as expected. I've also automated finding my Wi-Fi password. What's my Wi-Fi password? And below there, it has my Wi-Fi name and the Wi-Fi password. Of course, we could protect it with a pen, but that's too much work. Another thing that's often automated as a software engineer are your tests. These are tests that ensure that your application is working as expected. You write unit tests, integration tests, and while most developers don't like writing tests, they actually do a lot of automation for you. Imagine having to test every single feature in every single part of your application when deploying it. That would take a lot of time, it would be very tedious, manual verification could take a whole day. That's why we have these tests. While they might not be super fun to write, you write the test once and then it verifies things for you indefinitely. Well, at least until the functionality changes and then you change the test. But essentially, you get an infinite amount of use of each test you write. Another thing I automate is anything I would have to pick up. I try to get everything delivered. This is something our economy and our culture has picked up on and has been automating over time. With your two-day delivery, you no longer have to manually go to the store and pick something up. And it brings up the question of how much should be automated. Maybe if you use an online wine service, you don't let the wine service pick out all the different wines for you. You like the process of picking out wine and deciding what you want that month, and so you manually manually go in and you choose. And maybe let's not automate the tech recruiter emails and send them out to every engineer you know. Auto renewal, auto pay, these are things you can automate and often work well for businesses if you do automate them. But there is a point where maybe you don't want to automate things. There might be a security concern if you save your usernames and your passwords with the browser that you're using them with. The same goes in software development. You may want to automate your deployments, and so taking the code from GitHub and putting it on the servers in Google Cloud or AWS, that's a common process that's a little tedious, and the steps are pretty similar every time with a few changes to the inputs. However, you might not want to automate the creation of your domain name or something that you're only going to do one time, or at least less often. Some of these things should be manual. In general, you want to automate things that are tedious, repetitive, things you'll have to do multiple times. Often, they happen to be things you don't like to do because they're repetitive and tedious and it's time consuming. Some things you might want to automate are fixing the white space in a given file. It could even be less technical and it just be your Word document picking up on your grammar errors. Given all of this, you do not want to automate a process that you get value or joy out of doing manually. If you like picking out your movies, maybe don't automate that. If you like going to the grocery store, maybe don't automate that. Now there will be things that you don't like to do but have value in doing manually. Code reviews. Code reviews are valuable as a manual process. You might find deeper bugs living in your code base, you can improve your team's technical knowledge. If you want to learn all about it, I have a course conducting code reviews on LinkedIn Learning. Check it out. But another thing I like to do is eat. Some software engineers have tried to automate this by drinking Soylent or Huel, but that's not something I would like to do. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Happy coding.